You can see now Rachel's team on the right hand side of your screen will be Tapu Lele, Drift Blim, Buzzwall, Nihiligo, Arcanine and Snorlax, which we saw um as you've seen do really well at multiple events and that combination of Drift Blim and Tapu Lele really putting in a lot of work. Yeah, it's so threatening. You know, the the normally what the Drift Blim will carry that psychic seed, it'll activate straight away and give the Drift Blim, the Unburden boost, doubling its speed straight away and allowing it to get off things like Tailwind to support the other Pokemon with Will-O-Wisp, so your physical attackers and things that threaten that Tapu Lele. Mm. And with the Tailwind, you put Tapu Lele in a Tailwind, or you look further down her team, put that Buzzwall, more importantly, in a Tailwind, and things get very threatening very quickly. I want to say one of the things on Matt's team that really stands out here is that Metagross, especially in this matchup. Mm -hmm. If she's gonna, if uh, Rachel will be bringing that Tapu Lele, it will boost the amount of damage that Metagross does. And Matt needs to re really work at making sure he controls that Arcanine. And Milotic is a really good Pokemon to do that. Yeah, it really deters any any use of Rachel kind of bringing that Intimidate to kind of um, take advantage of that. But then again, you say that the Metagross has that clear border ability, so. Yeah. Doesn't, it's it's doesn't more those flare blitzes, though. That's flare blitzes. That's what, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah so. He really needs to uh, make sure that he controls that damage output. And we are just about to go into round five here at the Pokemon 2017 Birmingham Regional Championship. Drift Blim, Tapu Lele coming out for Rachel and Anand, and for Mateo Dorel. It's going to be Metagross and Milotic. Key, key choices there. Nice. And you see Mateo trying to fish for that Arcanine lead from Rachel, but she's not falling for that. Um, and Rachel's, as we see, the Psychic Seed on the Drift Blim it will get that Unburdened Boost and it's going to be able to either set up a Tailwind, set that Tapu Lele up, or it does threaten the Metagross with yes. potential Shadow Balls and Will-O-Wisps as well that Matt needs to be very careful of. This is one of the things that, um, that Drift Blim actually has a lot of options and it's quite scary to uh, face up against it. We see that Tapu Lele is going to go for the protect. Matt celebrating here, expecting that maybe. The Will-O-Wisp going to go into the, the Metagross now and this will neuter its physical attack. Obviously Metagross with the clear body ability will not be affected by Intimidate but Will-O-Wisp will do the job. Ice Beam going into the Drift Blim now. It's going to do a, a nice chunk but the special defense boost from the Psychic Seed doing really good work here. And there we see Zen Headbutt into the Drift Blim. Not enough to pick up the knockout especially with that burn, but a lot of damage dealt by Matt this turn. Huge damage, even after the burn. It's very surprising, but you've got the, the Psychic Terrain there boosting that Zen Headbutt, so it's no surprise that it's going to be doing so much damage, even with its attack half. Yes. It's got a huge attack stat, um, and Metagross has really taken advantage of this Psychic Terrain here. It's now going into the next turn, and it is threatening that Tapu Lele. The Tapu Lele isn't really threatening the Metagross at all with its Fairy and Psychic type stabs. Do you think that uh, Driftlin needs to set up a Tailwind here to make sure it doesn't, um, that make sure it gets the most value out of being at such low health at this point? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, if we get the the, the, the Tailwind up now and then Rachel can sack it and maybe bring in that buzz wall and start. Instead, we see the switch out. It's going to be a Shadow Ball going into Tapu Lele, taking it down just below half HP and getting the special defense drop as well. Another Psychic coming out from the Tapu Lele going into Milotic. A lot of damage there, leaving with just 45 HP, showing off the Life Orb and Ice Beam coming out from Milotic, which will do some damage to Driftlin, knocking it out here. and. Rachel goes down to just three Pokemon, and Matt's taking a lot of damage on some, some key members of his team. Yeah, the Milotic now is in danger of being killed this next turn. Um, Matt does have the Metagross in the back, he can switch in safely on a potential Psychic. Um, but now, as you see Rachel bring in that Snorlax, it may carry something like High Horsepower that would threaten, mm. and there's always the risk of a Belly Drum here, or yes. a Curse, or something like along those lines. So. Um, It'll be interesting to see if Matt carries anything to like taunt to shut down the Snorlax and stop that. But um, the Tapu Lele on Rachel's side if it has got Moonblast that may be in range. Matt's Tapu Lele might be in range to be taken down by that Moonblast. Especially so. with the Life Orb mm. boosting the damage output from Tapu Lele. Uh, Milotic here in a bit of a pickle needs to uh, try and figure out whether Matt wants to switch it out and save it for later, especially if he wonders if the, the Arcanine is in the back, it might be useful then. But with the, the speed of Tapu Lele on Rachel's side, it might just be better just to sack it here. We see the Arcanine switching in for um, the Tapu Lele on Matt's side of the field, getting an Intimidate onto that Snorlax, which is always very, very helpful, especially if it's looking to boost. But we see the Protect coming out from Milotic now, so not going to be knocked out this turn. The Tapu Lele on the opposing side of the field is going to drop a Moonblast, so as you said, Lee, targeting down that Tapu Lele, Arcanine resisting that 
with, with its fire type, uh, fire type defenses, but getting a special attack drop, which probably doesn't matter too much. Most Arcanine are usually physically based. Return from Stormax going into that Myotic, which doesn't take any damage because of Protect. Yeah, really nice play there from Matt, kind of adjusting his board position, expecting that Moonblast into the Tapu Lele, bringing the Arcanine who resists it. And now he's got something on the field that can threaten that Snorlax, you know. We know that Arcanine learns Will-O-Wisp. We've seen previously in this tournament Raw used on it, so you know he can stop that Snorlax from setting up. And I think that's the main priority now. Trying to get rid of this Tapilele is mm. the other, the other problem Matt's got. And the Miller take. I wonder if he's just going to sack it, let it go down, to bring that Metagross in to really start threatening it again. So Tapilele will go for the Psychic into Arcanine, making making a good call there. Uh, just trying to get as much damage onto Arcanine, which does pose a big threat on Mateo's side of the field. Alotic takes this opportunity to uh, recover up and getting a lot of HP back. The return from Snorlax, just trying to keep it in range to probably get, get knocked out by a, a Psychic from Tapu Lele. But Matt needs to, uh, sorry, uh, Rachel needs to find a way to deal with this Arcanine, which could be a big problem for the Pokemon that she has with her. Yeah, but she's still putting on a lot of pressure because that Tapu Lele, as long as it's under the Psychic terrain, it's putting out a lot of pressure with that Life Orb Psychic that it can fire off at any point. Um, we're going to see Matt now switch out the Arcanine to preserve it for later in the game for the Metagross that should be able to soak that up a lot better mm. and just protect the, the, the Melotic. Safe plays from Matt now. Tapu Lele going for that Psychic once again, hugging down that Arcanine slot. Not going to be able to do too much damage to this Metagross. Again, it's a resisted hit uh, with Steel Typing, meaning making sure that the Psychic type attack doesn't do too much damage. A curse coming out from Snorlax on Rachel's side of the field, removing the, the minus one attack drop that it received and boosting its defense as well. Yeah, it, you know, Rachel really taking advantage of this turn and, and taking advantage of the position that Matt's in where she's got so much pressure as long as that Psychic terrain's out and Matt's switching and protecting. It's so dangerous to do that in front of something like Snorlax that, like we say, can belly drum up or, like we've seen Rachel do there, take advantage of that turn with a curse and yes. start really powering up those attacks. But Matt does have the Arcanine in the back to kind of come in, cancel that attack boost. Um, but if Rachel just sits there and keeps cursing up, has Matt got the resources at the minute to, to be able to handle that? And it, is he going to allow it to do it? And I, Rachel at the minute feels like she's in a, a bit more of a stronger position, mm. even though she's down on Pokemon. I'm interested to see what Rachel has in the back. This is something that um, we haven't seen yet. Uh, and it, we've got to think about like how our team is structured. So the Nihiligo could offer a lot of um, support against some of Matt's team, especially against like, Tapu Bulu and stuff. But um, maybe Arcanine makes more sense in the back. I'm not too sure. But speaking of Arcanine, Matt is going to bring the Arcanine in on that Snorlax, again, reducing its, uh, its physical attack down to minus one. A Protect coming out from Rachel's Tapu Lele there. Doesn't want to take any super effective steel type damage from that Metagross, which does target it down with a Meteor Mash. And again, another curse coming out from Snorlax, getting set up, especially in the face of two physical attackers like Arcanine and uh, Metagross. Yeah, and the problem now is that Rachel's starting to get those defensive boosts. Now mm. her attack is neutral at the minute. Arcanine's intimidated twice. She's boosted twice, so kind of negates itself. But the fact is that that Snorlax is getting harder and harder to take down. Melotic is going to be threatened whenever it comes in from that Tapu Lele. So Matt really needs to try and prioritize getting the Tapu Lele taken care of, mm. but not letting the Snorlax get too carried away as well. Now, it'll be interesting to see if Matt has anything on this Arcanine to really sh start to shut down this Snorlax, because I think this is a turn where he needs to start really concentrating on, on that side of the field as well. Yes, yes. And if, if he has a Roar or um, a, a way to control the damage output from Snorlax, it would be a good opportunity to use that here. Tapu Lele is going to retreat. It is going to be the Arcanine coming out from Rachel's side of the field. Again, dropping an Intimidate onto the opposing Arcanine from Matt. Clear body activating on Metagross, meaning it doesn't take any attack drops at all. Um, a Will-O-Wisp coming out from, from Matt. That's, that's the play that he needed to make. Just try and limit the amount of uh, damage that Snorlax gets from those boosts. Um, we see the Meteor Mash going into what I assume will be the Tapu Lele slot. Yep, you see the Arcanine taking a bit of damage there. It's not, it's resisted, so not very effective. And this is one of the things that Matt needed to worry about, the high horsepower, especially if uh, Snorlax retained its boosts, and a good way to control the amount of damage that Rachel had on her side of the field. Yeah, definitely. Really good play there from Matt with that Will-O-Wisp into the Snorlax and kind of picking that moment perfectly to do it. Um, like we said, the Snorlax has had two curse boosts, but he's got two Intimidates onto it, and now he's got the Burn onto it. So. That burn will slowly wear it down, but it's a question is, has Rachel got Recycle on that Snorlax? Yes. Has Matt got the resources now? He needs to 
try and manoeuvre to get the Milotic onto the field to deal with that Arcanine. It's a pity he hasn't had it in to get the competitive boost, but yeah, Rachel's showing her experience there and not bringing it in until the, the, the path's clear almost to yeah. bring it in safely. And he can't, uh, sorry, Rachel can't bring in Tapu Lele at the moment just because it would take super effective damage from Metagross. Uh, it's and also then she has to worry about if he does manage to get Milotic in as Metagross does switch out for that Milotic. If she brings in Arcanine later on in the game, then that's already a competitive boost. And she doesn't have the damage output on her side of the field to really do that. Oh, speaking, of speaking of... Speaking oh. of... Whoa, okay. Was not expecting this. This is going to be a Gigavolt Havoc. It's going to go... We imagine into the Metagross slot. I would imagine so, yeah. And is this a big read coming out from Rachel and Anand? Gigavolt Havoc is going to launch a massive bolt of electricity. Who's the target? It is that Milotic. Wow. Impressive play from Rachel and Anand here. Milotic being wiped off the field and Matt applauding himself there. What play from Rachel. Brilliant read. Brilliant. She obviously saw that the, the Metagross was threatened heavily by the, the big fire type attacks from the Arcanine from Rachel's side of the field and really just made a big play there to take the game and um, it's not looking great for Matt right now. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, but those are the sort of plays we love to see mm. as, as uh, Pokemon fans and I really hope you guys enjoyed that at home. The the board position for Rachel just got so much so much easier and so much better. She can freely switch around again now if she, if she wants to. Um, also, another interesting thing is Matt has revealed Heat Wave on his Arcanine, which is not something that you usually see. Maybe this leads us to think that um, his Arcanine is actually special attack investing, which means that the, the, the Snorlax um, on Rachel's side of the field, even though it's getting those curse boosts, doesn't really matter so much. No. Um, especially from the damage output from, Snor uh, from from Arcanine, but with a higher special defense stat, might not be a problem anyway. Yeah, not too much of a problem, and it does kind of board Matt a bit better in that sort of situation with something like a Curse Snorlax. Mm. But the burn here, it's, you know, the Snorlax is still sitting pretty healthy, it's still probably going to have Recycle to get back its health. Um, the Arcanine's putting a lot of pressure on Rachel's side onto Matt's Tapu Lele. We don't know the speed tiers yet of no. these two, so if Rachel's Arcanine does outspeed Matt's Tapu Lele, it's threatening a KO. It could be possible. I mean, by having the Gigavolt Havoc, she has suggested that it's actually probably a bit more offensive, which means it, you, they usually are built faster. Mm. We see the Protect and the Psychic going into the Arcanine, a Snarl coming out from um, Matt. Uh, Matt's own uh, Arcanine there, Hope, probably trying to catch a, a Tapu Lele switch in there. Uh, Snorlax will go for the return now. It is burnt, and it's going to do a fair amount of damage to Tapu Lele. It picks up the knockout with a critical hit. Oh, that's really Heartbreak. Yeah. Yeah. So you can you see how much that meant to Matt. There's no... Um, there might not be too much coming back from this, especially with uh, the Arcanine on Rachel's side of the field threatening that Metagross. Snorlax in a position where if it gets takes any damage at all, it'll, it will pr probably activate a, a, a berry. Um, we'd imagine this is what how most Snorlax are built in this, uh, this current format. Um, so it looks like we might be seeing a forfeit here. We do see the message coming up on screen from Matt, uh, and he needs to really think about game two here. Yeah, and Matt not want to give any more information away, yeah. I think, in this match. He kind of knows that he's in a position that's going to be hard to come back from, and he just wants to take this time to think about how he's going to approach this matchup and go into game two to try and even up the scores. So that was game one here in round five of the Birmingham Regional Championships. Rachel Anand taking that first game. Matteo Durrell now has to think about what he wants to do going into this game two to make sure the balance is there. But Rachel putting on some work. The Gigavolt Havoc was so impressive. Like either, del either getting rid of the Metagross, entirely not having to worry about that, which wasn't really the main main problem. Mm. Matt, knowing he's in a bad position with Metagross, bringing in the Milotic, the read was done. What play from Rachel? Yeah, really good insight from her. To, you know, that was the point where the game swung. Yes, yes. and she, she just took full advantage of that opportunity. Um, Matt was in a really tight position there where the Metagross was seriously threatened. It wasn't offering really any offensive threat to either the Arcanine or the Snorlax because mm. it was burnt. Yes. It wasn't the psychic terrain on the field, so it made all the sense in the world for him to get that Milotic in and start putting some pressure onto that Arcanine. Rachel seen through that and going for that huge Gigavolt Havoc and really just turning the match on its head. Well, let's see what game two will have for us. We see the teams again. Matteo Durrell, Hariyama, Arcanine, Tapu Bulu, Tapu Lele, Metagross, and Milotic. And Tapu Lele, Drift Blim, Buzzwall, Nihiligo, 
Arcanine and Snorlax for Rachel and Nand. And Mateo led very well in the first game. He, he obviously had an idea of what he thought Rachel would be bringing. Metagross was in a good position. Then Driftlim revealed the uh, revealed the Will-O-Wisp. And this is something that we've said before. Driftlim has so many options available to it. And you're never really sure until the worst happens what Driftlim's going to do. Mm, yeah, that's it. But I wonder how, if we haven't really seen, you know, um, what options Matt has outside um, with that Arcanine. We saw the Heat Wave and we saw the Snarl. I wonder if it's worth bringing that to, you know, leading with it. You'll be able to see the speed tie between that and the Tapu Lele and if you're able to get a Snarl off onto it. Yeah. And that'll help support the Metagross possibly in that situation. So you're reducing the attack damage of the Lele and you're uh, reducing the attack damage from that Drifblim. But yes. then, like you say, you've always got to worry about the Will-O-Wisp onto yeah. the Metagross. If you can keep that Metagross preserved and stop it getting burned, you're going to be in a lot better position going into the, the latter stages of the game with it, taking advantage of your own psychic terrain with it and really doing some big damage. I think Matt just listened to you a little bit there. We can see the, no change up from Rachel Nan, Drifblim and Tapu Lele once again, and Arcanine coming out for Matt as a lead with Metagross on the side. So we see that the Psychic Terrain does go first. So Rachel has revealed that her Tapu Lele is faster than Matt's Arcanine now. And the Intimidate from Arcanine not really doing too much damage. Uh, sorry, not really doing any effect onto the Drift Blim or Tapu Lele from Rachel. Yeah, now here we've got we've got the same situation nearly as, as, as game one where Rachel can just freely go for a Will-O-Wisp onto this Metagross. But Matt is aware of this now. So whether Matt will adjust, um, to take the Metagross out, or whether he might just go for a Meteor Mash into that Tapu Lele. Well, um, because it's still burnt, will do a huge amount of damage. Well, there is no switch outs from that. He instead gets burnt with the Will-O-Wisp. Psychic coming out from Tapu Lele with the Life Orb boost in Psychic Terrain is going to be huge, a critical hit. Heartbreak again. That is so unfortunate. So much damage from Tapu Lele in Psychic Terrain with, a with the uh, Psychic Surge boosting from psychic, uh, from the Life Orb as well. And they see the Zen Headbutt going into the Drift Blim, but what a turn for Rachel. Big turn for Rachel. She got um, the, the Will-O-Wisp call right onto the Metagross. Matt didn't switch it out, and she got that big Psychic, which we don't know how Matt has trained his Arcanine, mm. if it is a bulky, a variant. Well, you'd imagine with, with Snarl and Will-O-Wisp, they usually are built that way. Mm. So yeah. maybe, it maybe it would have survived, but I guess we'll never know. No, we won't know because of that big critical hit there that's really give Rachel a huge advantage going into this next turn. Um, she can now go for that Tailwind, like we discussed in Game 1. With whether she'll go for it now or whether she'll just take advantage of the Shadow Ball with the Drift Blim. And she might not feel like she needs the Tailwind in this game, but I eat my words <laughs> as she goes for it. Straight away, the Tailwind coming out from Drift Blim, making the most of having um, having that speed boost as well. Moonblast coming out from Matt's, uh, from, from Matt's Tapu Lele onto Rachel's Tapu Lele and a returning Moonblast going onto Matt's Tapu Lele. Just trading a bit of moon damage here. Uh, Life Orb again, showing how much damage it puts out there. Zen Headbutt coming out from Matt's uh, Metagross going into Tapu Lele and picking up the knockout. Um, Matt hasn't changed moves with his Metagross there. Uh, and no. usually you would probably go for Meteor Mash just to get the super effective damage. It might be indicative of the item that he's holding. Um, and the burn, again, picking up the knockout there, but really hampering what Metagross can do. Mm. And it kind of indicates that maybe Matt has the choice band on that mm. Metagross from the damage that it's doing after the burn. And like you say, he's not changing moves there when it probably does have Meteor Mash and it would have been the, the better option there. Didn't need to because he got the Moon Blast and the, the double up with the Zen Headbutt was enough. But yeah, it may indicate that. Now Rachel's sitting in a really, really strong position. She's got the, the Shadow Bolt from the Drift Blim onto the Lele and a big fire type attack from yes. that Arcanine yeah, onto the Metagross. Such a strong position for, for Rachel and taking grasp of the game with that critical hit early on. Uh, Tapu Lele is going to switch out here. Tapu Bulu coming in. Um, so it will be overwriting the Psychic Terrain from Tapu Lele. Grassy Surge coming out, powering up its Grass type moves. But Drift Blim is just going to launch a Shadow Ball into that slot. It's going to take some nice damage here. Tapu, Tapu Bulu usually has higher physical defense and special special defense. Gets a special defense drop, which doesn't really matter too much. Flare Blitz is going to come out now. Going to go into that Metagross and pick up the knockout. Really, really hard for Matt to come back from this. Yeah, really difficult position. And the Tailwind, as Rachel's set it up, has just put her in such a dominating position. And Matt is really, he's clutching at straws with what he can do now. And it's such a shame because of that critical hit put Rachel in such a dominant position. And 
that's not the only reason why she's in the position she is. She, you know, she tailwinded when she thought Driplin's probably going to go down next turn. Let's get the tailwind up and get stuff in to stop rolling out a win here. She's played smart. She's played smart. Mm. Obviously, you got to roll with the RNG. Uh, obviously. Uh, things can happen like tr critical hits and she still played in a way that mitigated the chances of Matt being able to strike a comeback. Yeah. Which is important and Tapulele coming in now, setting up the psychic terrain once again, but Driftblim will be able to target this down with a Shadow Ball, uh, you'd imagine, and then an Arcanine launching a Flare Blitz into Tapulele to make it curtains for Matt, unfortunately. So Tapulele does go down here um, and we imagine there'll be a Flare Blitz coming out from Tapubulu. Oh, sorry, onto Tapu Bulu there. Arcanine gonna do some massive damage here. Tapu Bulu will go down, and game two goes to Rachel and Anand. Wow. Really, really strong performance from her. What a season she is having. Such an exciting competitor to watch. Just amazing. And like you were saying before the match, you know, she's been using this team most of the season with slight changes, and it's like her.